Hello and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this demo, we will see how to make native communication in Flutter. We will learn how to make calls to the native functions in Android and iOS from Flutter and vice versa. So that's the introduction and let's not waste time and jump into the code. So as usual, I'll be starting with an empty template. So the mindo.file just has a simple um, home widget with just a container with a white background. Now let's look at the pubspec.yaml file. So we are not using any kind of third-party libraries. We don't need any third-party libraries to achieve this functionality. Let's go ahead and create a simple UI for this demo. So I'll create a stateful widget, home screen, with a scaffold and a bar. And the body will have a container with a padding. Let's set it to 20. Then the child, which is a column with children, an elevated button. The child, which is a constant text. Let's set the text to say, get message from native. And let's give it, give some spacing after the elevated button, constant. Size box, height of 30. Then we will add a text and a message. Let's declare the message string. I'll set the string to empty for now. So let me add some more spacing after the text. Now let's go ahead and change the home to home screen in the window.dot file. So let's run the app. So there is our home screen with the button. Okay. Now let's declare a new variable called platform, which is of type method channel. And the method channel is actually used for communicating with the native platforms like Android and iOS. So we need to give it a name. So that's kind of a signature. We, we need to use the same name on the native side as well. So we will see how we are going to use it in the native side in a short while. Now we will write some functions to communicate with the native. To which avoid, I'm gonna name the function get message from native. This is going to be an asynchronous function. And the result from the native is assigned to the message variable. So message is equal to await platform.invoke method. I'm gonna name the method get message. So this is a string that we are going to use in the native side in a short while. So we need to wrap the this line with a try catch because it's going to throw it may throw a platform exception. So if there is an exception, we will assign the message to fail to call get message with the exception object. So when when we tap the button in the UI, we're gonna call this method and call set state to update the message in the UI. So right now there is no method. So let's open up the iOS folder and open the project. And you need to go to the app delegate file, which is the entry point of an iOS application. So you can see there is a method which is called it finish launching with options. So that's the first method that's going to be called. So let me paste in some code. So first thing is we need to get the Flutter controller. Then we need to have a Flutter channel variable, which is a Flutter method channel variable. And the name should be same as the one we used at the Flutter side. And we need to have a binary messenger, which is used to communicate with, between Flutter and native. Now we will set a method call handler, which takes in two arguments, the call and the result. The call will have the, the method name that is being called from the Flutter side, and it will have the arguments as well. So if we check the Flutter side, you can see that the get message is the call dot method that we are going to get, and it can have the arguments as well. So this is how we can send the arguments. It must be a proper object. So you can have a 
map of parameters so I'm setting it to param1 and the value 1 so you can see here we are getting uh, the method get message here and we are comparing it and we will call the result to send back the result to flutter so I'm just commenting out this code so this is error callback so let's let's try sending out a success callback so result and a message since we change the native side code we need to rebuild the app so the app is now running click on get message so it comes here okay so that there is no error so let's resume so you can see that we got the message back from the native side right so that means it's working so let's see how we can trigger the platform exception we will try to send a error from the native side so this is how so if you want to get the arguments you can get the arguments like this but we will see that later so we'll try to trigger a exception so if you want to send some error from the native side and you want to catch it on the flutter side you can do like this which has which is a flutter error so let me label the app so you can have a detailed description and an error code also a message in the flutter error object so we will see that in a short while the app is running now we will tap the button and we should get a error from the native side so which is a platform exception and we are printing out that object here so you can see that it's it says something went wrong and the error code is minus one so you can have any message here which is meaningful for you okay so that's how we can catch exceptions from the native side so you must you must wrap the invoke method with a try catch so here so this is how we can set the messages the message and a details uh, string or object whatever you want you can have a json string here so the next thing we are going to look at is how we can call a flutter method from the native side so it's the same invoke method you need to set a method name and you can have the arguments as well so here you can see the method name is from native which we are going to send to flutter and also the arguments which is having a key message and the value hello from native so we are going to set up some methods on the flutter side to get this callback so let's go to the flutter side and we need to initialize the method channel to get the callback from the native side so let me write one more function future void i'm going to say init native method handler which is an asynchronous function and platform dot set method call handler just like we did on the native side and we have the call parameter which has the method and also the arguments so we so now it's almost done uh, we just need to identify the method and do accordingly we can call any function based on that method name so let's write a switch method and i'm going to pass in the call dot method parameter and inside the case so we are going to match the from native function which is defined from the native side so from native copy that put it in the case so when switch finds the string from native it's going to execute the code inside this block and you can call any flutter function from here or you can do any kind of processing here so we are going to get the get the message from the native side so we're going to decode the arguments as map of string dynamic and we're going to get the message from this json so let's declare another variable string native let's say native to flutter message and set it to empty let's copy that and native to flutter message is equal to json and let's find the key so we know the key here right which is message so you can have any number of keys 
and call set state that will refresh the UI. So let me call this function, init this function in the init state. All right. Now we need to display the message in the UI. So, so you can see that it's easy, just like before, call has the method and the arguments, and you just need to match the string and call your plotter logic from here. So it's that easy. So that's a way you can do it. So we are calling this flutter invoke method after three seconds from the native. So when you when we tap the button, right? So you can see that it's in the main thread. And after three seconds, we are calling in a flutter function from the native after we tap the button. So you can have it. Uh, so the main uh, usage of this is if you want to do a call after some time from the native to flutter if you are doing some long processing and you're there is a much delay and you don't have access to the result function the result variable and you can have any callback later from native to flutter so that's that's where we use the flutter channel dot invoke method okay so let's see if that's working so click that after three seconds we should get a callback from native so you can see that hello from native so that means so when we click the button, we match the get message and we send the result back to the iOS, back to the Flutter. And after three seconds, we are calling a, the flutter.invoke method from the native side to the to the Flutter side. Okay. So that means you can have this callback anytime. So let's do the same thing for Android, just like we did for iOS. So we need the channel. So make sure the channel name is same. And we need the method channel object as well. So the next thing is we need to override a new method called configure flutter engine. This is where we initialize a flutter channel and also a binary messenger that we used in the iOS as well. So this is how we communicate from flutter to native and native to flutter. So import it and we need to initialize the flutter channel as well and we also need uh, the set method called handler which is exactly similar to the iOS uh, so result.error will send a result error to the flutter side and result.success will send a success to the flutter side so let's uncomment the success and see if we are getting a success callback on the flutter side so we should get a received callback from Android when we when we tap the button on the flutter side so we don't have to change any code to call the android side as long as uh, you have the same method name so let's go ahead and run the application on an android emulator so let me let me check yeah so let me create an android emulator real quick so download the components create the emulator run the emulator and we should see our application so click on the get message and we should see a received callback from android so let's see what happens if we do a error callback from the native side so result.error has error code and the message and the details so rebuild the application since we change the native code so click on the button you can see that there is a platform exception with the message and the um, uh, the message and the details with the error code minus one right so let's do a call from the native side to flutter so just like we did for the ios call flutter channel dot invoke with the with the method name and also the parameter i'm using a handler dot post delay to do a delay call so let me copy that and paste it inside the post delay so we are calling after three seconds so so this is how we can get the arguments on the Android side. So let me show it. So variable, so val well, param1 is equal to called out arguments and key param1, so which is the same key on the Flutter side. So there is an error. So, okay, so that must be, that must be an integer. Okay, so there is still error. So cast it to int and make it nullable. So all variables will be that we get as arguments will be can be null so make sure to check that before 
you use it. So let's send that value back to Flutter and see if we are getting it back. Okay. Let me also change the message from the native to Flutter to hello from native Android. All right. Uh, so this is how we can get the arguments on the iOS side. It's almost similar. So you can get the arguments and the part of one as string and you can use it. So let me rebuild the application and click on the button and we should call the get message and after three seconds uh, the native should call the from native function and we should get the contract so you can see that we have the parameter param one value there which was one so hello from native android also came so that means it's working the one thing you need to remember is when you're doing a call from the native side to flutter side you need to do it inside a main thread okay so that's why you use the handler.post delayed or handler.post and instead that we have the flutter channel dot invoke method so similarly you have to do the same thing in iu side as well that's why you use the dispatch main which makes it uh, run in run inside the main thread okay so that's all in this video uh, the link to the source code is in the description so make sure to switch to the proper branch i'll be providing the branch name also in the description and if you like the video please don't forget to like subscribe and share also please uh, leave your valuable comments below the video i'll make sure to uh, reply to reply to the comments thanks for watching and see you in the next video until then bye